all my life, I've been asked questions like, so if I punch you really hard, are you going to bruise real bad? Or, so if you get cut, are you going to bleed? And my only response is, wouldn't you? Growing up with hemophilia in a world where the only recollection of the disease was excessive bleeding out was an interesting one, to say the least. From an early age, I became aware of my disorder, and I knew that questions about how quickly I'd bleed out from a paper cut were almost as guaranteed as death and taxes. You can't run from either of those, so how was I going to be able to run from people's curiosity? Hemophilia, for those of you that don't know, is a rare genetic bleeding disorder that affects the blood's ability to clot. A person unaffected by hemophilia has 13 clotting factors. All of them react in a cascade-like pathway to initiate a clot. A person that's affected by hemophilia is missing one of those proteins. To break it up and to make it a little bit more simple to understand, if there's a fire in the back of the room and a puddle of water up here in the front, there's going to be 13 people lined up between that puddle and the fire with buckets ready to help get water to it. A person with hemophilia is missing one of those guys. I suffer from severe hemophilia A, which is a deficiency in the eighth clotting protein. So that means my eighth guy took an extended vacation starting when I was diagnosed at 13 months, and he has yet to come back. I think he unionized. I don't know. <laughs> the medicine that fixes this disorder is called Factor. The medicine is administered whether it be intravenously by the patient themselves, a skilled infusion nurse, or a caregiver at home. Not only is this medication extremely expensive, but it's also hard to persuade insurance companies that they need to pay for it. In fact, it wasn't until recently that people who suffered from hemophilia were actually given a normal lifespan within the last 10 to 15 years or so due to the abundance of both product and insurance dollars. People with hemophilia are typically plagued with excessive joint damage, most of which ankles, elbows, wrists. The only way to fix those if it gets too bad is either by fusing the joint or by amputation in the most extreme cases. I want everyone to close their eyes, please. Now, imagine you're out running. You step wrong and you roll your ankle. It hurts, doesn't it? You look down and you see your ankles starting to swell up. The amount of motion that you have is reduced significantly, and in that one last ditch effort that you have to make your ankle move, excruciating pain. Open your eyes. The good news, you guys are all going to heal without any outside aid whatsoever. The 13 guys inside of you are going to do their job and put that fire out, and all you have to do is sit back and relax. Now, with your eyes open, I want you to imagine something else. I want you to imagine going through all of that, but the pain, the decrease in motion, happens for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Sometimes monthly, sometimes even weekly. Congratulations, you've all experienced what it's like for a hemophiliac to have a minor spontaneous bleed. Now, I was a highly active kid when I was little. I spent lots of time outdoors with family, friends, even by myself. The amount of time that I spent outdoors, I always had to listen to my parents say, be careful. But to anybody that's ever been a kid, you know you're invincible, so you don't have to listen to them. The fact that I grew up in a household where someone in my family, my mother, had medical background was the difference between me having to be extremely careful in what I did and being able to go out and play around and not have a care in the world, her knowledge made it to where I could go out and I could wrestle, to where I could go out and play football with my friends, and made it to where I did not have to live life in a bubble. All through the grade school years, I didn't let hemophilia get to me. I didn't let it have an effect on my day to day. I would get a bleed, typically they were in one of my ankles. I'd go inside, I'd do my infusion, and I'd be right back out to living my healthy, active life. Sometimes simultaneously giving my parents a little bit of an anxiety attack as I took off across my grandma's field in my four-wheeler saying, look how fast this thing can go. <laughs> now, 
given the knowledge that you have about the frequency at which bleeds can happen for hemophiliacs and what I mentioned about insurance companies being hesitant to pay for the product, does anybody know what might be coming next? In the spring of 2007, my family received a phone call that was all too familiar to hemophiliacs, that came before me, and it was very, very unexpected for some people that had never been in the bleeding disorder community before. The phone call said, your son's about to reach his lifetime insurance cap and you need to consider other healthcare options. The thing that sat and ate at us, there were no other options. We didn't qualify for Medicaid, and the copay assistance programs that were given out by the drug companies would not have even scratched the surface of the amount of product that I needed. So we thought we were out of luck. It wasn't until the nurses and social workers of Children's Mercy Hospital's oncology hematology department came and said that they had a study that involved testing out a new extended half-life factor product. The one key feature that spoke out to us, factor free of charge. Once I was on this study, they gave me a device that I used to log every treatment down to the minute that I did it. They wanted to make sure that there were no breakthrough bleeds in this treatment to see how effective the new factor was going to be. This device, unfortunately, was not as cool as the opportunity to get free factor. It sucked. As I played with it more and more, it was an old HTC phone. It was really hard to get used to, and I decided that I needed to do something about this to fix it. Up until this point, all logging had been done exclusively on paper. So after sitting and thinking how I could get back to the hemophilia community in the logging process, I created Hemotool. Hemotool is an easy to use, one-stop shop essentially for all logging needs. It allows patients and caregivers to log treatments. It allows patients and caregivers to order new refills from their pharmacy and it allows them to find treatment while on the go. In an industry where choice is constantly being taken away, be it the product that the person uses, be it the pharmacy where the person gets that product, I speak as not just a patient, but for someone that works in a pharmacy as well. Having control over something as small as being able to choose how you log makes all the difference. One of the biggest things about Hematool as well is it offered transparency to the insurance companies. As I'm sure all of you are aware, in 2010, the United States government passed the Affordable Care Act. The biggest thing about this act was that it eradicated lifetime insurance caps for the privately insured. And let me tell you, the coagulatorily challenged rejoiced. Having Hematool allows for direct communication between the patient, the insurance company, the pharmacies and the doctor's offices to show them that we are thankful at this newfound start at an overall healthier lifestyle. Being able to send our logs to the insurance companies shows the insurance companies that we are very thankful for what they have given to us, or we're forced to. It helped improve relations between the insurance companies and patients into what they are today. My ultimate goal is to continue the mission of advocacy to the bleeding disorders community. I don't wanna just reach those that are outside the community. My goal is to also reach the ones inside. When I tell you that an overall active, healthy, fun, energized lifestyle is right in your grasp if it's not already there. The relationships that I've formed within the hemophilia community are ones that I'm gonna hold on to and cherish forever. They've helped sculpt me into the strong, open-minded, optimistic individual that I am today. And I have absolutely no intention of slowing down anytime soon. My ending point is a subtle yet ever so important one, for it can be applied to anybody, especially those who are affected by an allegedly debilitating disorder. It can go for anybody that's ever felt the need for guidance or the need to know that they're not alone. Your life is entirely in your hands. No matter the cards you were dealt, no matter the blows which come your way, you are important. Success is not something to be measured by the decimals in your bank account or the newness of your car. 
Success is something that should be measured by your ability to stand up against the odds and show people the empowerment that you have deep within yourself, no matter what it was that stood against you. I speak for everyone, all of my brothers and sisters in the bleeding disorders community, when I say what might not always be so blatantly obvious. Don't write us off so quickly, you might be surprised with what we can accomplish. Thank you.